We do have a quorum of three people, so the June 19th meeting of the Board of Health is called to order. Uh, any comments from the public? Issues that are not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move over on to Regulation 72. The public hearing is still open. We opened it, uh, reopened it at the last meeting. If you recall, I think it was the consensus of the board that we would pass the smoking regulations. There were two issues, however, uh, that there was not total agreement on, and that was in uh, section F and section G, which you'll find on page 5. Uh, the first one was uh, the use of blunt wraps, and the second issue was, uh, which would have essentially banned the blunt wraps. The issue was that uh, these not necessarily dealt with uh, underage smoking, but gen because, and technically, if you could not buy any tobacco if you're under 18, so why should we? isolate the blunt wraps, although it has been brought to our attention that they are actually used by juveniles sometimes to roll other smoking materials. And the other issue was the question of free distribution of coupons, and the same issue was brought up. Uh, what does that have to do with preventing or limiting smoking in minors? because, in fact, uh, this would prevent older people who probably should know better but could, but could still get the coupons. So the public hearing is open. Are there any comments? Anyone wish to speak? Well, including us. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to, if I hear no objections, I'll, I'll close the public hearing part, and I would like to pleasures of the board, their comments. Could you just clarify the coupons? I might have misunderstood. I thought the coupons were to purchase cigarettes either by the pack or the carton at a, at a, a, you know, at a cheaper price. It's dependent upon which cigarette manufacturer chooses to do which approach. Some of them uh, will use the coupon process to take money off of the purchase of another package of cigarettes. Other companies will utilize coupons for merchandise, uh, jackets, hats, sunglasses, wallets, visors, things of that nature, logoed items. And if you buy X amount of cigarettes, uh, you get a certain amount of coupons, and you can turn those coupons in for a, uh, a hat with 50 coupons or things of that nature, uh, visors, sunglasses, all logoed items by the uh, the tobacco retailer. So that does encourage smoking. Uh, or not? Maybe. I guess it depends on how you want to look at it. I, I see some individuals buying more cigarettes than they would normally use because they want the hat or the jacket. Uh, fine. Other comments, questions from the board? Well, since I missed your last meeting, mm -hmm. um, what my sense was the the debate or the difference or two two tie was over the racks, the blunts, and or the coupons. And right. It was how there was probably we did not take a formal vote, but the consensus right. was if we did, there would have probably been a two two tie. Yeah. One person was opposed to them. I wanted to think about it. Right. So well, that's essentially where we are. I, I've sh shared my reaction. Uh, I think the, the question of blunts or wraps is uh, clearly re related to smoking, and I do not support exempting them, so to speak. So, And the coupons, to me, were a pricing issue, and yeah, I think we should just stay out of that part of the yeah, situation. I feel the same way about the coupons. So. Yeah. All right, so... Uh, <coughs> We, if someone would make a motion, then that we would exclude C, the distribution of coupon redemptions, from the regulations. Do I hear a motion? Sure, I'll, I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Any further comment? We're only 
voting now on Section C or the distribution and coupons as sort of amendment to the regulations. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So therefore, that is excluded from the regulations. Section C? Six. Section G. Yeah. Now I need a vote and a... Uh, I need to hear if, uh, a motion on the amended regulations, which is all the regulations as written, minus Section G. Might I ask a question? Yes. Uh, Section F, blunt wraps, you choose to leave those in? Or well, take those? we're going to vote. Oh, I'm sorry. We only made an, an amendment on that Okay. One. Okay? So, so, I, I, need so. A, I need a motion to uh, either approve or not approve the regulations, which now do not include Section G. Sure. I, I would move that we adopt the regulations without Section G. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chairman votes aye. Therefore, the regulations as proposed are accepted without Section G. And when are you going, you also were asking about a, a date to start. That is correct. Um, the question has been what would the board choose as a significant starting date for these regulations? It could certainly be as soon as July 1st. Uh, it merely means distributing these regulations in their amended and adopted form to all tobacco licensees, uh, or you could choose uh, uh, a different date. So, so how many are there, Richard? You know, uh, roughly, I mean, 10, 100? Yeah. A dozen. So they're not all that many. No. It's like you won't, you wouldn't miss them. No, no. <laughs> you know no. who they are. And and they're, they've got to be aware this is coming, I assume. Oh, so. Very much so. So what would be the reason to delay? And I'm, that just suggests to me, you pick a reasonable date like the first of July and go for it. You know? I have no problem with the first of July. <clears throat> I think it's unanimous <clears throat> consent that we'll put the. It's not like they have a big inventory of cigarettes. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's plenty yeah, of time. Yeah, and they're just taught, you know, like, <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> just, just to be sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item Could, is... Mr. Chairman, yes. one question. It's somewhat related. Um, I, I noticed the other day, Just it's always fun to look at the Cape Cod ties for... It takes you no more than two minutes anyway. And um, uh, another community on the Cape adopted a regulation to uh, make sure cigarette smoking doesn't occur on public beaches. That's correct. And uh, it took it from, you know... Six to ten, or well, whatever it is, the number. And I, I, I wanted to just ask who on Nantucket has the authority to do that, if, if we had any interest. I'm not saying we do, but is it this board or is it the Board of Selectmen? Do you know what I'm I think it's within the purview of the Board of Health okay. to health not issue? allow smoking on beaches. Yeah. There are five towns on the Cape that have adopted that regulation, five including there? the National Seashore, yeah. which encompasses two towns. Well, you know, I, I know that might be controversial with some people, who, but to me, there is a health issue. There's also a, you know, disposal issue. It's a mess, mm -hmm. and, and people just throw their cigarettes, as we see all around town. It just continues to amaze me. Yeah. It's just mind-boggling. But anyway, on the beaches, it's something that has a lot of benefits, so I think we just should consider it, Mr. Chairman, at some point. We can discuss it. To me, it's probably more of a trash issue than all the breeze. Yeah, I, I, I can certainly you uh, argue petition the, the other boards to see how yeah. they've set this up in regulatory form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, could, you could argue the health issue on a blowing beach, but certainly I, I'm not pleased to see all the garbage that's left by it. Yeah. Anyway, so, I, I don't know what to do about it, but it just appeals to me. I'll look into it. Conceptually, Mr. So. Ray will look into it. Okay. All right, the next item is condemnation order, basement apartment 13 Emilio Drive. Uh, I'll give you a brief intro yeah. to this. Uh, the property was noted as a basement property, which had individuals habitating that area uh, with a – actually, I'm going to let Mr. Mr. Crowley okay. take this. It was a basement that was finished. Uh, with no permits, um, pretty much 
when I inspected on the complaint, I felt it was back against the wall, sort of. There was in one bedroom with children, there was no windows, there was only one means of egress. The interior stairs to the upstairs apartment were, was uh, that the door at the top was locked from the other side, they couldn't get out. In case of fire, the other bedroom only had one window, not enough natural light. Obviously, not enough natural light required for the kitchen. So it was a safety, pretty much a safety issue on the egresses, and um, you know, it was not. It, it, it doesn't meet the standard for doing that. Okay. So that's over time. What has occurred here at this particular site is that the basement has been vacated. The people have left. However, in order to maintain the vacancy of that basement. We wish a partial condemnation of the basement portion of 13B Amelia Drive until the appropriate permits can be obtained to correct what work has been done in that basement, if it can be corrected at all. Okay. I think we actually technically have to have a public hearing we do a condemnation so the public hearing is open. Does anyone want to discuss it? Hearing no one from the public? The public hearing is closed. And other comments from the board or the staff? just want to add one thing that and I think Richard touched on, it, but I don't know if it's clear. That nobody is living in that basement at this point. They did follow the instruction and leave the basement. So you're not actually putting anybody out on the street. It's just preventing somebody from coming back. But Will you inspect again to make sure yes. no one comes back in? Yes. The, the condemnation order, as long as it is in effect, allows us unfettered access to, the to that portion of the building. We can go in there at any time, day or night, uh, simply by announcing our presence. So you, you're recommending a partial order uh, <clears throat> that would be in effect until such time there's an appropriate permit issue. As the appropriate permits uh, have, been, have been obtained, the work has been done, and the permits have been closed out. Has, has all of the communication been in writing? Has oh, yes. Been any, there's been no, because this has been going on since March. Yes. Yeah. All right, well, <clears throat> hearing nothing else, I need a motion that uh, we will issue a partial condemnation that will stay in effect until such time as all Permits are issued and they're closed out and the health department and building department appropriately have re-inspected the premises. Thank you, I'll be happy to second. Could I have a question? Further discussion, yes. Yeah, just, just to clarify, are there any, I don't know, negative consequences? I mean, does a sign go on the front door and say condemned? Or, you know, I'm just trying to understand the impact if they've complied. And, um, the signage will go on that portion of the building affected, which will be the basement access door, uh, more than likely on the inside basement access door also. And the outside access door, I mean, I, I should have driven by the building, so it's a condo. There were two or three units or something. And is the door it'll be on facing Amelia Drive, or does it face the driveway no, the or something? Is in the back? facing... Uh, it would be facing uh, that driveway between 15 and 13. Gotcha, okay. okay. So it's, actually, it's not, I'm sorry. Do they go through a bulkhead or is it a... No, they actually have a set of stairs exterior. No. It just, I mean, if the person has complied, I just don't know that we want to be punitive unnecessarily by an advertisement right. on the front door. That's no, I, it will not be noticeable by the public driving yeah. by. Okay. Fine. Any additional discussion? All in favor of the motion? The chairman votes aye. The uh, condemnation order, as described in the motion, uh, has been approved. Thank you. I do anticipate, unfortunately, more of these coming to the board. Yeah. Well, you mentioned at the beginning of the season you expected a lot of these. Have you been? Do we have complaints, or are you checking? Is, have, has you had more complaints than usual? Uh, we are getting more complaints, yes. Uh, and we're running about a 50-50 uh, violation rate. Mm -hmm. Some of these are, are not justifiable complaints in, in that uh, mm -hmm. there were okay. some mistakes made. They didn't 
what they thought was happening is not happening, but in some of them it obviously is happening, and we are dealing with them as we find them. Well, we're here. What's help. that? We're here to help when you need well, us. I appreciate Just that. Another, another follow-up. Um, is there... Do some of the complaints come in anonymously? Or is yes, there a, they do come in anonymously. How, how does that work? And we you? are mandated by law to investigate all complaints, be they written, telephonic, or anonymous. How, how do they come in anonymously, though, by a phone Usually left on my answering machine. Yeah. Uh, I will and occasionally you can't trace get the number? a letter. Uh, could we trace the number? I'm not saying you'd bother. I'm just. I don't you know, know if that's sometimes they, you know, the, have that capability. The call answering system, whatever, it tells you. Yeah. You know. yeah. I mean, we look at it as immaterial because it is our responsibility to respond to that. Right. Okay. Uh, and some people will stop us on the street. Right. So we get uh, the proverbial "Don't mention my name." Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of that. And we honor that. Okay. Good. Thanks. All right. And you have a consent order for us. Fifty-two Tennessee Avenue. The administrative consent order. Uh, this is for a property at 22, uh, 52 Tennessee Avenue. The septic system has been installed. Uh, the owner was reminded that he had to take out an administrative consent order approval. He has applied for, uh, well, he's going to have to pay in $20,000 over 20 years, and uh, we simply need uh, the board's approval, and I have the ability to sign those forms. Do we hear a motion to approve the consent order for 52 Tennessee? Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chairman votes aye. Consent order. The administrative consent order for 52 Tennessee is approved. And you have three loan agreements for us. We have a request for a uh, septic loan modification at 10 and 11 Mass Ave as costs were somewhat more excessive than what was initially anticipated. The costs have gone from 42.6 to $52,000. The state is certainly willing to pay the additional fee with the approval of the board. Why don't we do all three of these together and vote on all three? Okay. Uh, the septic loan agreement for 24 Golf View Drive for 26.482 and two cents. Uh, this again is a failed system that uh, will be replaced uh, very shortly. Uh, septic loan agreement for 13 Massachusetts Avenue at $66,500. This is a, a little different uh, in, in the manner in which it's happening. Uh, the, set, the 13 Mass Ave is on the other side of, quote, unquote, Millie's Bridge, normally an area that we look at with regard to tight tanks. Mm -hmm. Now, tight tanks obviously carry the stigma of a six-month use on a, year, on a yearly basis. These individuals have decided that they wish to use the house more than that. It is a winterized structure. They plan to use it uh, in the middle of winter, and therefore they do not qualify for the six-month septic tank use, so they've... Uh, allotted to uh, take out a loan to put in a complete compliant system, which is $66,500. So help me with that, though. Um, so it's not a tight tank. No. But it's compliant. I mean, this is like what we think of as an alternative system. This is going to be a conventional alternative design septic system, right. yes. And, and is that the same up above on number five, just given the price or the cost? Uh, yes, that was just... Yes. I'm sorry, right, yeah. Steve. Yeah. So, yeah, so it just gives us a hint, at least yeah, two examples here of, of the range of the cost for an yes. yeah, it's, yeah. it's that area, It's tight. There are lots of tight. There's mm -hmm. groundwater issues. It, yeah. It's a lot of work. But it, yeah. We might have to dewater to get tanks in. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a difficult project. process. Yeah. So an alternative system might cost less than a different it, location? It, yes. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay, and you're recommending... <coughs> Approve of all of these all laws. Uh, do I hear a motion? Sure. So made. Second. Second. Further discussion on the loans for 1011 Mass Avenue, 24 Golf View Drive, and 13 Massachusetts Avenue. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chairman votes aye. The loans, those three loans are approved. Updates. The tick-borne disease video is about a week behind schedule, but we now have a final script, and there will be voiceovers recorded next week. Uh, we have actually added Dr. Lepre to the video. Excellent. You let him in again? I mean, no, 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 no. You knew it was going to happen. <laughs>
<laughs> no. He's got to be there. The, the, the gist of it is, is it's this, this woman and her dog and her kid walking around beautiful Nantucket talking about the issues of tick-borne disease. And when it came to the technical parts, it, it didn't seem correct that this woman would be talking about <laughs> the science. So that's going to bleep out of, or it's going to transition from her walking in the woods to Tim is going to do a little thing and then go back to the woman. And then when it gets technical, back in, it'll go back to Tim. So uh, it's moving along. And I say we're probably about a week behind, but that's not too bad. Uh, so we'll do the voiceovers and the filming probably towards the end of next week because one of our actors won't be available to let. This is what Driscoll's doing? Yes, Dan Driscoll's doing this. It'll be about five or six minutes. And Helene has found that the Dreamland will give us a discount if we have a one-minute version to put it up front. Yeah. Good. And I, someone Good. mentioned uh, a friend on the board of the steamship that said they might run it and we'll do local television and and I we'll put I, it on our website. And well, and, and funding for this was not necessarily a part of our, our budget for 1415. <clears throat> However, <clears throat> I believe we can find the money within the budget to do this. But uh, I would appreciate, if needed, a little support from uh, a few members of boards uh, to help us uh, I thought garner you, the funding. I thought you already got it somewhere. So did I. Oh, well, don't tell me that. <laughs> Oh well, we don't. I, I, in all honesty, I don't know what's in the new budget, fourteen fifteen. But you know, there's. But this, I got to know. I got there was know. a transfer. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting, I didn't. I I got to know about the bill. They just found a little status of it because they're going over to the, to the new fiscal year, and they. Ha I, I. I think in the transfers, Richard, do, do you? I'm as frustrated with this as you are. Yeah, no, but the budget transfers, I, I have to go look at them again. Somehow in my mind is professional services and the plus department is giving up money in this fiscal year. Yes, that's what was agreed. And, and that's, that's for well, I mean, uh, that, that's that's for just they have the video. Yes. yes. We're talking, oh, okay. I'm, I'm not talking about the video. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my oh. apologies oh. Sort of yeah. for not so being, shaking. my apologies <laughs> for not being a little bit more specific. I thought I was going to have to call her husband. No. <laughs> no. What I'm talking about is the potential cost of running this at the Dreamland Theater. Yeah. Okay. That has not been built into the budget. Small, However, small I will have that discussion right. with right. Uh, my supervisor. Let me, let me confirm exactly, and then I will... And that's what I would you, like, yeah, yes. Okay. And then I will take that to my supervisor and uh, but we, hopefully get that. There through. are other venues where we could probably... <laughs> get my it. apologies. The three men ought to put it in for nothing. Come on. <laughs> it's a community... Uh, it's public service, I know. Yeah. But they're it's giving us a 30% discount. <laughs> Oh, thanks for nothing. Yeah. We should talk to them because, you know, uh, the Dreamland was built with community support and yeah, funding. It's 501c3, exactly. And, all right. We'll work on that. <laughs> uh, Why we don't I ask the question? As long as it, I will. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's public funds. Mm -hmm. this, all right. It's not advertising. It's not advertising. This is health issue. Uh, the ad hoc committee, uh, Helene and Richard, and uh, and I, and we had Jim Lentowski sort of join the group as and struggling through ways uh, to do more. I, I think we're okay as far as uh, education. We have the video. I was interviewed on local television. They had a couple letters out. The issue always becomes to how to uh, reduce the deer population. And we will continue to... We also wanted to talk about the schools. And the, the schools. The nursing school and the farm school. We will insist that happens next year. And sort of a chair of the skin cancer program. It was set Saturday, August 2nd at 9 o'clock, and um, because this room is taken, we're going to be at the, the Nantucket Cottage Hospital tent, what they have up for their summer lunch lectures, and I will be in touch with Dr. Qureshi to um, see if he would like to invite someone else to join him and get a title on the details. Okay. Your report, sir? Yes. 
Uh, only a couple of things. Uh, I'm very pleased to announce that uh, next Friday I will be attending a morning meeting at the Cape and Islands Health Office Association. The tracking program for alternative design technologies, the first of its type in the country, will be available. At Nantucket is going to be a part of this program, and it will be uh, rolled out next Friday at this meeting. We will all be taught how to use our computers with regard to the system. And uh, we've been waiting a couple of years for this. Uh, this has been a long time coming, and this will be a big, big help in assisting us in tracking the activities associated with alternative technology systems. Uh, each engineer, when they design an alternative design system, the engineers have the responsibility to log this system not only with the local board of health that they're dealing with for a permit, but with Barnstable County. There will be a $55 fee which runs the program. Uh, all the information will be entered into the computer banks in Barnstable County, which uh, each town within the Cape and Islands has access to. Uh, we will receive automatic pop-ups when testing of these systems doesn't meet appropriate criteria. We will receive automatic red flags when maintenance contracts, contracts expire. And this will be a big help for us. It's a very hard thing for us to track. Uh, they have promised me that in the fall they will be coming down <coughs> and retro-entering a lot of the systems that we have already installed. I've spent the last year uh, marking them in my book uh, so that we can draw them out of the files and, and get that data into the system. Eventually, Barnstable is hinting that all septic systems may become enterable data into this system, which will give us an indication as to performance data, uh, the types of systems that are going in, and how effective they are. And this could be a big help in a couple of years when we start to look at areas outside of the designed uh, sewer areas. Areas on this island are not going to get sewered. Uh, there are defined areas that just not going to happen. So we're going to have to start looking at some alternative systems for use within those areas surrounding our water bodies, such as the Quays, Popus, Wawinet area, uh, and, and maybe some areas around some of the ponds that are not going to be sewered. So this will be uh, a big help for us uh, to determine what sort of systems should work in what areas. Um, the other news is, well, that was the most important one. I've just uh, come from a meeting of uh, what we call the Problem Properties Group, which is something that kicks in about this time of year when we start dealing with overcrowding issues, zoning problems and things and building issues and things of that nature. They certainly seem to ramp up this time of the year. One of the things that I have requested, and it was simply a request, that the, the head of that committee, uh, Leslie Snell, uh, when she reports our, our, our problem properties results to administration, that she ask again about the draft rental regulations that have been in draft form for a number of years, uh, that the town has been... Uh, somewhat hesitant for financial reasons to uh, initiate. Perhaps it's time we, we looked at that again. Uh, it would obviously be a regulation that would be approved by the Board of Health, but I'm going through administration and more than likely the Board of Selectmen for the first round in order to, to set a financial uh, implications limit on this because it is going to require additional manpower and equipment such as a vehicle there are more than likely well over a thousand rentals on this island and each one will need to be walked through and designated as occupancy loads and measured and things of that nature. However, it would go a very long way to assisting us in overcrowding issues and dealing with these illegal basement apartments uh, in a very perfunctory and very quick manner. As a part of that, it has also been announced through the legislature that there is a push to establish a housing court in Division 5, uh, Region 5 rather, which is Plymouth and the Cape and Islands. Uh, it is proposed to be a, a circuit rider sort of uh, arrangement where a judge will move from town to town and county to county uh, and deal with housing issues. We do not currently have this. This is something that is really very popular and very useful in the Boston and the bigger metropolitan areas. 
We would take all of our housing complaints to this particular court. They would be summarily dealt with. Uh, as we go through processes here, we have to deal with the clerk magistrate, and this could take months, literally months. So this is uh, another wonderful advent on the horizon for us, another great tool. Thank you. Board, concerns? Just a, a follow-up on the uh, rental regulation question, whatever. Um, you know, it's one thing to go all the way to inspecting each individual mm -hmm. unit. It's another to, um, I don't require, like, uh, you have to pick up a permit. Licensing agreement. Licensing yeah. agreement. And, and, and the individual inspection requirement should come later. I'm, I'm just saying you can tiptoe in without the full board of the expenses and get started. I just want to make sure we have uh, I don't, options I don't on the I don't necessarily table, disagree with that. I, I think it, it's, it's not at the full purpose of the intent of the regulation. Yeah. Um, it's an approach that can be taken, but it indeed will require an additional person to just simply process all those licenses and the application yeah. forms. But when, when we talked about this before, at one point you thought the license fee might cover the cost of that. Absolutely. A $100 licensing fee would cover the cost, so, I, I believe. So it would. might balance out in some way. Yeah, I, I, I think I agree. Yeah. I, it's, it's, I'm treading carefully with this, and I'm treading slowly with this. I, I don't want to step on a lot of administrative toes here. And, uh, or the real estate toes. I mean, they come out right away. Well, there are a lot of complaints. Oh, I, oh, whenever you start this, it's, yeah. there's a lot of opposition. I, so. I think that's a given. I'm not suggesting we not go that direction, but anyway. And you were going to keep following us up on the uh, innkeepers and their education. The what? Innkeepers and uh, education materials? That seems to be good. I've actually had two lodging houses call me and say, can you please deliver more oh, of the shower hangers? People are taking them. So <laughs> Good. Good. And that was last week. Um, so we don't have to have legislation yet. No. Uh, I may run out of my, my initial supply of them. And that's, that's not great. a bad thing. That's great. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, one other question. Um, I was like the stop and shop conversation with somebody. Um, and they were asking about how to initiate, uh, I'm not sure complaint is the idea, but uh, this has to do with fertilizer. And clearly some people look around and think a green lawn is using too much, which may not be the case. But nevertheless, they're, they're trying to think how do they initiate a process anonymously, as usual, and say, hey, what about you know, this such and such a lot? So I'm not sure where to go with that. Is there a line, or should they just feel free to call your line and then you don't check, so to speak, and they don't leave their name? I'm not... I think or at this time, Carlson or I would talk to I would talk to Mr. Carlson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, my own personal experience, uh, I am using a an organic, phosphorus-free fertilizer on my lawn this year, mm -hmm. and I'm frightened at how green my lawn is. Yeah. Frightened that people are going to start pointing fingers at me. Uh, but, and it is but, a non-nutrient fertilizer. They have nutrients. I mean, so is there is there a read on the content? Even oh yeah. Though it's organic. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, I just organic nitrogen is nitrogen. Yeah, well, I live on a freshwater pond, so nutrient loading, the nitrogen, does not affect the pond. It's However, it's a low nitrogen fertilizer, which has no phosphorus in it. Yeah, that's which, the, the low that's nitrogen. The issue, the and phosphorus. the phosphorus is the issue for my particular property. Yeah. But I am amazed at the color of my lawn. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? Uh, hearing nothing else, and without any objections, we will adjourn the meeting. Okay. Boy, you guys are efficient. Thank you. We could all go upstairs to watch the finance committee. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, that sounds like so Doesn't much fun. Doesn't that sound like fun? Yeah, oh. a lot more fun than this. <laughs> well, we got to get out. We spent our efforts last week sorting out tobacco. Thank so you all. easier this week. In the soccer? You guys in the soccer watching? Yeah.